cyanobacteria as the word says cyano cyano means greenish blue color you know so that is why cyanobacteria is also known as blue green algae so what are the classifications inside cyanobacteria as we have already discussed cyanobacteria is one of the first ever photosynthetic organism that has ever been evolved on planet earth and as you can see here in it's an archean eon uh, the origin of life happened and subsequently immediately after the origin of life which is now believed to be uh, a u bacteria uh, the cyanobacteria appeared so cyanobacteria is also a kind of a u bacteria it's not an archaeobacteria it's a u bacteria you know cyanobacteria is a, of course it's a prokaryote right and uh, uh, you know subsequently the cyanobacteria is responsible for uh, you know formation of the ozone layer because this is the organism that flushed the atmosphere with a much needed oxygen you know and then uh, first eukaryotes subsequently formed which is red seaweed which i told you and throughout this time you know early proterozoic and end of archean it's only cyanobacteria that ruled the the uh, the, the planet earth you see and uh, the plants that we see we uh, we study in the classic botany syllabus uh, the land plants are all developed much much later in silurian time of phenerozoic you know so the earliest plants were of course cyanobacteria isn't it and uh, i also introduced that uh, the earliest non fossils are also cyanobacterial biofilms uh, you know this have been deposited one on the top of another so you can see that array of biofilm together forming like a rock like structure called stromatolites you know this is some of the oldest non fossil 3.5 billion years old fossil and i also introduced these two very famous cyanobacteria prochlorococcus and cyanococcus you know so these two organisms alone are responsible for uh, almost uh, two third of the oxygen in the air that we all breathe and also uh, on the flip side of the same coin these two organisms are responsible for uh, two third of the you know carbon sequestration that is happening in the world for time immemorial you know for the last uh, 2 billion years these organisms have been removing the excess co2 from our atmosphere integrating into the soil and when they die it goes to the ocean bed and it forms you know the long chain hydrocarbon molecule that what we call now as fossil fuel you know fossil fuel is nothing but the dead bodies in one sense yeah dead bodies of uh, the cyanobacteria prochlorococcus and cyanococcus very very important but unfortunately uh, people take it for granted and overlook their importance you know uh, most of the school syllabus these days completely avoided even bs and msc botany students uh, end up not even knowing the even the their existence prochlorococcus and cyanococcus two most important cyanobacteria cyanobacteria most of the cyanobacteria also uh, you know uh, diazotrophic that means they can fix the atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia and other nitrate or nitrite molecules you know they are symbiotic nitrogen fixers uh, especially nostoc and anabina these two genus are really famous for uh, as nitrogen fixers and how could they do this nitrogen fixers because it has got a nitrogenase enzyme and as you see nitrogenase is uh, highly labile for oxygen you know so it needs uh, an atmosphere without any oxygen so that is the reason that these cyanobacteria have got specialized organelle some special cell called heterocyst in which the nitrogenase can safely execute its function as uh, you know the fixing the atmospheric nitrogen into the ammonia right so heterocysts have very very uh, adapted uh, you know organelles to ensure that there is no free oxygen flowing inside the heterocyst because the oxygen molecules can uh, virtually make the nitrogenase uh, completely futile nitrogenase cannot function if there is a molecular oxygen in it you know so what are the adaptations in it you can see that heterocysts have got three additional cell wall including one with glycolipid that forms a hydrophobic barrier to the oxygen to provide a micro anaerobic environment for uh, the function of the nitrogenase uh, very exciting isn't it and it also produces a nitrogenase and other proteins involved with the nitrogen fixation the heterocyst is the the key organelle that houses nitrogenase and other enzymes involved with the nitrogen fixation uh, heterocyst also has got several biochemical molecules that can degrade photosystem too 
Uh, the reason is that PS2 produces the oxygen, you know. So if PS2 is active in heterocyst, then of course nitrogenase cannot function because it will uh, it will be uh, swimming in uh, the sea of uh, uh, molecular oxygen, you see. So that will virtually render this uh, nitrogenase dysfunctional, right. And it also upregulate the glycolytic enzymes. Upregulate means increase in the expression of the glycolytic enzyme. So inside the hydrosis, the glycolytic enzymes are upregulated, means express more. So that will lead to glycolysis, more glycolysis, the breakage of the, the sugar, you see. And it also produces proteins that scavenge any remaining oxygen. Molecular oxygen should be scavenged to make sure that the environment is microaerophilic or almost uh, uh, anaerobic, I would say. And also contains some special plugs, so-called polar plugs, composed of the cyanophysin, which slows down cell-to-cell -cell diffusion. The reason is that heterocyst is, uh, you know, surrounded with the cells which are uh, non-microaerophilic. You know, they are aerobic cells are there on both the sides. So if the cell-to-cell -cell diffusion happens, then of course oxygen can diffuse from the neighboring cell into the the heterocyst. So to prevent it. You really need a very nice plug you know so yeah it's like leak proof plug right so that is what the the function of the cyanophysin containing polar plugs in cyanobacteria and uh, of course cyanobacteria has got large number of economic importance uh, especially for uh, you know nutraceuticals the term nutraceutical means uh, these are for supplementary foods you know uh, not exactly the pharmaceutical but supplementary to prevent the uh, development of the disease for example aspirin or vitamin tablet right like that many people are consuming the spirulina tablets spirulina is a excellent source of iron and protein you know it's a it's a protein lots of proteins you can get it but unfortunately spirulina is pretty expensive per gram if you look at the protein so most of the claims that spirulina is a, it's a magic amulet supplementation is severely flawed it doesn't have any scientific evidence uh, you know it, it borders to the pseudoscience but still yeah there is a huge market value for spirulina spirulina by the way is a common uh, word but it's actually the genus uh, arthrospira is what we refer it as spirulina in english you know so it's mostly it's arthrospira genus so it's an iron and protein supplement Another very important cyanobacteria is Oscillatoria, very common in freshwater ecosystems around the world, especially in pond and lakes and, uh, you know, the river, uh, riverine uh, habitats, you can see Oscillatoria. So if you look at the classification of the cyanobacteria, the kingdom is, of course, I told you, it's a eubacteria, and inside which subkingdom is Negibacteria, it is a very big subkingdom of the bacteria, Negibacteria. The phylum, the cyanobacteria, what we call is basically it's a phylum, phylum cyanobacteria, and it has got only one class that is Cyanophysiae. There are several orders in it. Nostocales, example is Nostoc and Anabina. Oscillatoriales, oscill oscillatoria is an example. Cyanococcales, Prochlorococcus and Cyanococcus, very, very important cyanobacteria, probably the two most important living organisms on the planet Earth. These two, cyanococcus and prochlorococcus, right? Because these are picoplanktons on the world's oceans. Spirulinales, spirulina, you know, and uh, pleurocapsales, pleurocapsa, crococcales, crococcus. These are the example genus of these orders, the major orders of the cyanobacteria. And if you look at the, the, the uh, you know, phylogeny of the cyanobacteria, uh, most uh, importantly, the three locus that we use for cyanobacterial classification is 16S rRNA because it is a prokaryote. You remember, 16S is quite often used for bacterial phylogenetic systematics, while for eukaryote it is 18S. You know, so 16S rRNA is used for cyanobacterial systematics. Uh, probably this is the the gold standard for cyanobacterial systematics. RBCL is also used because it has, uh, you know. Uh, it has got the precursors of the chloroplast, you know, of course, right? So RBCL gene is also there in uh, the cyanobacterial, um, uh, you know, the genus and species. And HETAR is another gene uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, that, that is uh, of high utility in cyanobacterial uh, phylogeny. 
so heter is the gene that is responsible for the differentiation of the heterocysts you know so heterocyst differentiation gene so that is uh, uh, yeah that gene is extremely important it's a key gene uh, that leads to the development of the heterocyst the nitrogenase containing uh, cell specialized cell you know uh, of this uh, this uh, cyanobacteria so i told you that cyanobacteria played a crucial role on the endosymbiosis the primary endosymbiosis so as you can see in, in this figure the primary endosymbiosis is how the kingdom plantae originated you know so it was done by the cyanobacterial precursor got engulfed by an ancestral bicond uh, protozoa you know non photosynthetic ancestral bicond protozoa engulfed a cyanobacteria and the closest living ancestor to that cyanobacteria is uh, you know cyanococcus that very important picoplankton you know so cyanobacter uh, cyanococcus is uh, uh, you know it's very much related to the most recent common ancestor for the whole plantae you know so uh, i mean the, the uh, precursor to the cyanobacteria that became the chloroplast in the kingdom plantae uh, that means it's a primary endosymbiosis remember there is a, a secondary endosymbiosis as well as well as tertiary endosymbiosis you know subsequent endosymbiosis from uh, the kingdom plant it got engulfed by other protists so that is how the secondary and tertiary uh, endosymbiosis resulted so cyanobacteria was the food for the first endosymbiosis Lynn Margulis uh, you know the, she did a lot of work on this uh, almost a century back right so this is how uh, yeah the cyanobacteria is indeed even even today if you look at the chloroplast genes uh, you can see that the chloroplast genome is so much similar to the current day cyanobacteria uh, you know and that is the reason that we now know that this had been through the endosymbiosis you know so the, uh, that is how the current day chloroplast originated